Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set up our uh, C++ environment for Visual Studio Online. So I just, uh, I've already logged in, I clicked Getting Started, and basically it popped up into this window. So we're going to go ahead and click Create Environment. Our environment name for our case is going to be Learn CPP. And I should spell better. The Git repository, if you go over to GitHub, um, basically if you log into GitHub and you create a new repository, just create new, it's this link right here. So we just copy this, uh, this GitHub repository and then paste it in. It will have a couple of spaces in it. Uh, notice that it is case sensitive, so lowercase p is not the same as uppercase p. We're going to go ahead and click create there. Just leave the defaults otherwise. The uh, four cores, eight gigs of RAM for standard, and then 30 minutes to spend time is fine. Okay, so it's going to be creating here for a second. Okay, so at this point, the virtual machine has been made, and uh, and we're ready to go ahead and launch it. So we go once it's once it's like this, we can just click the link here, or we can go down and click connect. Okay, so here we are, and it's basically a, um, a identical to VS Code, uh, just in a browser here. Okay, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to um, to install some things into the virtual machine. So you you should think of this as basically a, a virtual Linux, you know, a, a Linux installation uh, running on a remote server. Okay, so basically you're working on your own little uh, operating system, um, uh, and that environment is then what Visual Studio Online is interacting with. So, uh, because it's its own virtual machine, if we go to uh, the menu button here and view, or sorry, terminal and new terminal, basically what we get here is we get a uh, a um, a uh, console for that uh, that um, virtual machine. Let's try it one more time here. There we go. Okay, I'm not sure why this happened to me before where the first one didn't exactly launch and then the third one did, but anyway, there we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use, um, so this is Linux, so basically if we do uh, sudo, okay, that's to say uh, do this as the super user, right? And we go apt update. So app, apt is like your um, app store. Okay, so apt is basically the app store for Linux. And so we say, hey, run apt as a super user and do uh, run the update command for apt. Okay. So basically what this does is it goes out and gets the most recent versions of all the software. You should do this every time you install something with apt. Okay, now I have a... Um, uh, Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've installed, or we're, sorry, we've updated apt. Uh, and just remember that when we copy in our uh, terminal, it's going to be Control Shift C and Control Shift V to copy. Okay, now I've made kind of a cheat sheet here of all my commands. Um, oops. Okay, so I've made a cheat sheet here of all my commands. Um, so remember, it's Control C to copy here, and then it's Control Shift V to copy elsewhere. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do sudo apt get install uh, build essentials. So we're going to remove the apt. I forgot to do that. Apt get is the old version, uh, and now um, the new version is just apt. Um, okay. So there we go. So sudo so apt install uh, build essentials in GDB. GDB is our debugger, and then build essentials is going to install all of our uh, uh, GCC compiler and G++ compiler. Okay, we're just going to go uh, yes. Um, you can also add the Y flag to assume yes on here. 
Uh, I didn't do that just because um, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure why, I just don't do it. So okay, so there we have it installed. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the, um, the extension. So uh, we're going to go to the View, Menu, View, Extensions. And we're going to go ahead and select um, C++. We're going to type that in. And we're just going to do the first one here. So we're going to click Install. And then, uh, and then we're going to reload required. So to reload this, actually, we just go ahead and reload the actual page here. So since it's in a browser, uh, reloading the page is 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 basically like starting and stopping the um, um, the application. So notice now down at the bottom there, you saw it install. If you have sharp eyes. Okay. So now if we go back to extensions, we should see that it's uh, installed. Okay, so here we see our extension. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and make our file. So our file, we're just going to go ahead and make a, um, a new file, and we're going to call it hello world.cpp. So hello world.cpp. And then we're going to go ahead um, and uh, it goes ahead and opens automatically. Just go ahead and copy the code for now. So go to your code sheet here and just copy the whole, uh, notice that I have the file name up here, and then just copy the code, that's our hello world code, and you'll be able to read it in just a little bit, but for today, just paste it on in. So there's our code, and we're gonna go ahead and click save. Make sure that your, uh, your two um, curly braces match here. So make sure you got your last curly brace, and make sure that the first line is, is hashtag include, um, or pound include, uh, IO stream. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go ahead and save this. Okay, so um, we're back, and because um, I just paused the recording, so <laughs> uh, so basically we have our hello world uh, code in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to compile the hello world code. Uh, but before we do this, we have to um, do some. Um, kind of set up here in uh, in um, Visual Studio. So uh, so basically what we need to have, we need to have a setup for the uh, extension, for the C++ extension. And then we need to have a launch and we need to have a task um, uh, JSON file. Uh, JSON is, is a uh, data format and we'll get into it in just a second. So the very first thing we're gonna do is do Control Shift P and we're gonna go to Edit Configurations UI Okay, and we're gonna go ahead, there's no selected configuration yet, uh, which is kind of interesting because basically there is one already in here. There's a default one, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and add, um, we're gonna go ahead and add one. So we're gonna call this Linux CPP. Okay, and you can call it anything you want, really. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, once we do that, it gives us some default values. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and call this uh, G++, or actually we'll just select it. Okay, so user bin G++, and it, it got that off of the system, so we know it's correct. And then we're going to, can, going to go ahead and change the Clang 64 down to GCC 64. Okay, and that should be it. Okay, so we can go ahead, um, that should have saved it uh, already, so we can go ahead and close this window. And then go, let's go take a look at the JSON file. So we're going to double click the JSON file. Notice that we have two configurations now. This was the default one, okay, this Linux one. And then we have the Linux C plus uh, Linux CPP one that we just did. If you want, you can you can delete the the uh, the base configuration. Uh, you can also just leave it in though. So uh, so basically, if you um if you delete from the uh, comma there, uh, and then the closing curly brace all the way to the open curly brace, we should be fine. I'm going to go ahead and do this. You probably don't need to. Um, Okay, there we go. But just for readability here, we're going to go ahead and just, I just went ahead and did that. Okay, so there we have it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start to debug our file. And that's going to get us our two uh, necessary, um, our two necessary uh, files. So we're going to go ahead and click start debugging. Okay, and it's going to say select an environment. We're going to say C++. And then we're going to select um, uh, G++ build uh, 
and debug active file. Okay, so notice that we have, we basically uh, have a couple things that got created here. Um, so uh, if we go back, we'll just go back to, um, to our file here. So notice that we have a launch JSON and task JSON. Okay, then we can go back to our debugger here. And let's just go ahead, um, let's go back to the C++ and uh, let's go ahead and just run it. Okay, so we went ahead and clicked the green button, we ran the file, and so notice that we already ran our, our C++ extension, or sorry, our hello world there. So notice this is our output in the terminal, but um, we wanna go in and just take a quick look at it here. So, so uh, just so you understand what you've, what's happened. So let's go back to the files, and we're in the, so inside our workspace, which is a, just a folder on our computer, uh, we have a .vs code uh, folder. The dot creates a hidden folder, so any kind of, anytime there's a dot in front of the name of a folder on, on uh, Linux, it's a hidden folder. If you're looking at it in most uh, file explorers, like if you're in a GUI, uh, Windows environment, or not a Windows operating system, but a Windows-based environment, right, a, a UI environment, uh, you can do Control h to see those hidden files. So let's take a look at launch and tasks. So the first is tasks. So notice that we have a label of G++ build active file. Our command is the compiler, which is our G++. Um, so O is the output. So it's saying, hey, make an output file in the same directory. Um, and notice that that's our hello world right there. So it's a directory and then a file base name with no extension. So basically it's whatever the CPP was, right, the CPP file in this case, hello world, it creates a executable of the same name just with no extension. And then the G flag here puts in the debugging information into the, into the executable. Okay, so that's our, that's our task. And then our launch is the debugger file. So basically, we have the name, G, you know, it automatically named it G++ build and debug file. Okay, our program, it gives the same name of the program, so it says, hey, go get, you know, hello world, right? Um, the stop at entry, we have no argument. Stop at entry, we want to go ahead and change this to true right now, okay? So stop at entry just means that the debugger stops and we can start to step through our code. Um, and then we have a couple more here. Um, so external console is false. We just want to leave that as false. Um, that would launch an external console, external to the IDE if we were editing um, editing on a computer. Um, setup commands, you just want to leave these the same. We won't go into these now. The MM, MI debugger path is really important. Okay, if you get an error here, you probably just didn't install GDB to begin with. Okay, so, um, so there we have it. Um, so now we want to go ahead, now that we've changed the stop at entry to true, uh, we want to go back and we want to go ahead and debug again. So let's go back to our debugger. Actually, we can just go here and we can go back to our file, go to debug and go start, uh, uh, start debugging again. Okay, so notice it's going to launch our debugger again. Okay, and this time though, notice that I don't get any output in my terminal, and that the reason for that is is that basically we added a breakpoint here at the beginning of the main function. Okay, so to to start running this, I would just go ahead and click start clicking step over. Okay, so so but before I do this, I want to go ahead and add some variables to watch. So notice in my code, I have this message variable here. Okay, so to watch a variable, I want to add it, and I'm just going to type in msg for message, right? msg here, msg, same name, okay? Um, and I'm going to add another one to watch, and on this one, I'm going to watch word, and enter. Oops, and I entered, changed my code there. So I deleted it. Okay, so we have our watch variables now. And our code, our execution is stopped on line nine. So now I'm going to start clicking step over. And notice the execution goes down to line 10. The message variable is now set to, notice that it's a, um, the message variable is a string array. So it's, um, so basically there's hello, C++ world from, and you know, these are the, these are the separate strings, right? 
but that's the content of message. So notice as I click through now, now Word, now because I'm in this loop here, Word is now the first uh, string inside MSG. I click again, okay, Word, it keeps looping. Word is now set to the second message inside MSG. And I can just keep doing this. And if you just keep watching the Word variable there, you'll see that it keeps loading in the, the next uh, string as we go, as we loop through. And it's sending it to C out, which, and that's just printing out to the terminal. And there we have it. Okay, so we can just keep hitting the step out until the very end. And then we finally see the terminal output right there. Uh, because we have finally at the end, we have the C output uh, end line there. Okay, so that is, um, so we're going to go ahead and call that complete on getting our uh, C++ up and running inside of Online Visual Studio. Best of luck.